Now, if your only experience of Harry Potter is through the films, then you might not even be aware of who Peeves even is, so I'll fill you all in so everyone's in the know. Peeves is a character that resides at Hogwarts, and he takes the form of a poltergeist, which is like a ghost, but they're less transparent, more solid, and they have the ability to move objects. Oh, and they were also never alive, so jury's out on where they come from. Now, Peeves is a bit of a joker. He's constantly causing trouble at Hogwarts, playing pranks, getting on the nerves of the students and professors. In a nutshell, he was a comic relief in the books. Someone to liven things up on the page and to give any kids reading a quick laugh. But what's interesting about Peeves is that when it came to pre-production for the big screen adaptation of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Peeves was amongst the many characters that got cast. Yeah, director Chris Columbus and producer David Heyman were all set to have Peeves make his big screen debut. So, who did they get to play Peeves? Come along, Richie, that won't do. Put on a nice face for the day. <gasps> Rick fucking Bale. <laughs> I mean, talk about perfect casting. I mean, who better to play a crazy, carefree lunatic than a crazy, carefree lunatic? And I say that with the utmost deepest affection. Rick Mayall was a comedic legend back in the day. He was best known for his role in the 80s sitcom The Young Ones, but I personally best knew him for his role on Bottom, where he and Aid Edmondson play a couple of pathetic, downtrodden flatmates who are constantly concocting schemes to get laid, only to fail and then proceed to kick the shit out of each other. <laughs> It's definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but if you have a very immature sense of humour, I'd highly recommend checking Bottom Out. Oh, and the live shows too, which honestly, I think are even better. The way they play off the crowd is just pure comedic genius. And whereas with most shows, if they fuck up their lines, that's bad. But in Bottom Live, it only makes the show funnier. Sit down! Sit down! I've got some sad and tragic news! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not very upset about it. <laughs> you looked a lot sadder than that in rehearsal. So, yeah, whilst touring the UK, Mayel gets a call from his agent and is like, Hey, uh, they're doing a film adaptation of the Harry Potter books. You want to be in it? And Rick's like, Why the fuck not? And so he's cast as Peeves the Poltergeist, and he's certain to be great. In fact, according to interviews I found with actors like Devin Murray and Oliver Phelps, Mail would make the kid actors laugh too much on set, which apparently made it difficult to film. But then something happened, and if you've seen The Philosopher's Stone, I bet you can all figure out what that something was. A month later they say, uh, Rick, <laughs> sorry about this. What? You're not in the film. What? Yep, Rick was cut. You bastard! <laughs> and let me just say this, and I'm directing this to you, Chris Columbus, because I can confidently tell you that this decision was 100% understandable. Yeah, I'm sure Rick would have been great in the role, or at least I'd like to think he'd have been great. But Peeves was never plot relevant in Harry Potter. He never advanced the story or served any real purpose, so his scenes went the way of other cut elements from the books, like Spew and the Death Day Party and many of the Quidditch scenes. There was also something out of Mail's control, that being how Peeves would be presented. Now, after scouring the internet, I just can't find out if they were going to make Peeves a CG character or if they would have gone the Ghost VFX live action route. Irregardless of what choice they went with, it would appear that Peeves' design was a big contributing factor as to why he got cut. In fact, Chris Columbus was actually interviewed about this by the BBC. He had this to say. The reason he was cut is that none of us were happy with the design. David Heyman and I looked at the designer Peeves and thought, we can get it better. Now, there was concept art of Peeves that eventually got released. Here it is right here. And yeah, if this was the design they were gonna go for, I'm actually glad Peeves got cut. He looks less like Peeves and more of a ghost version of the Penguin. It's way off what I envision Peeves to be. 
Though this is concept art, so we can't know for sure if this design was final. After all, it doesn't look anything like Rick Mail. So maybe this is what they were going to go for before Mail got cast? Who knows? But there was also a second part of that BBC interview I wanted to touch upon. Because Columbus goes on to talk about getting what they shot of Peeves out to the public. He said, So we shot the sequence, but we won't have it ready for the initial release of the DVD. We'll try and get it out for maybe a year and a half, two years from now. Chris Columbus said those words 18 years ago. And as you likely have figured out by now, considering that I've not shown you any footage of Rick Mail as Peeves, the scenes he shot were never released. I mean, the Harry Potter films have had numerous DVD, Blu-ray and digital releases over the years. You'd think Mail scenes would have been included in a deleted scenes compilation by now. I mean, it's not like the film was released almost two decades ago. Hell, I couldn't even find any behind the scenes footage or on set photos of him. The only thing I found remotely related to Peeves in the films is this B-roll footage where Rupert Grint name drops him. Charles are really stupid. Probably Peeves playing jokes. And that line in particular is interesting because listen to how they changed it for the film's release. Charles are really stupid. Probably people playing jokes. Yeah, they changed the word Peeves to people. And I'm no lip reader, but it seems to me that they used a take of Rupert Grin saying Peeves in the actual movie, but they had Rupert dub the line over in post. They had him say people because when said, it looks identical to Peeves. People. Peeves. You know what I mean. So deep within some Warner Brothers vault somewhere lies male scenes, and I'm just ungodly curious as to how his performance turned out. But we do have a clue. Because there was actually another actor who played the role of Peeves. Just one other. Yeah, and that was a guy called Chris Crosby who voiced the poltergeist in the Harry Potter video games. So, shouldn't you be snuggled up in your little beddy bed right now? What's it to you? Well, if you're gonna be like that, here's a little bedtime story to keep you busy. Oh. Now, in order to be released concurrently with the films, the game's developers must have had access to many of the film's assets, so they can, simply put, make the game look like the film. So it's reasonable to assume that Crosby's performance, along with the look of Peeves here, is what we likely would have got. Why, it's Potty Wee Potter! I mean, come on, that is Rick Mail through and through. Why, it's Potty Wee Potter! Why, it's Potty Wee Potter! <laughs> But we can't know for sure if this representation is accurate to the film, because no member of the general public has seen Mail's interpretation of Peeves. And that really saddens me, because it means that Mail never got to see people's reactions to his performance. Because in 2014, he sadly passed away. And I think everyone has those celebrity deaths that hit them really hard. And for me, Rick Mail was up there. He was a huge comedic influence on me, and I was excited to see what he'd have done next. Now, look, the Harry Potter films feature many great British actors, and I think it'd be a great way to honor Mail if Warner Brothers allowed him to officially join the ranks of those actors. To Warner Brothers, I say, release Rick Mail's scenes as peeves already. Maybe even release a cut of the film with his scenes included. Lord of the Rings has extended editions. Why not Harry Potter? In fact, while you're at it, get around to releasing all the deleted scenes fans have never seen. We know there's plenty out there that have never seen the light of day. There's rumours that scenes of the Death Day Party were shot, Victor Crumb has a lot of scenes that got cut, Sirius and Bellatrix apparently had a more extended duel, there's more flashback scenes of James and Lily yet to be released, and then there's Draco redeeming himself at the end of Deathly Hallows Part 2 by throwing Harry his wand. That was filmed, here's the B-roll. Potter! Why that was cut, I will never know. But I should take into account the wishes of Mail's family. I mean, I'm assuming they'd want to see the footage he shot, but if they'd prefer to keep it private, I'd understand. But please let us see it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to painstakingly rot a brush wrecking to the film scenes myself. Piss off. He told you to piss off! What are you, deaf? He'd have been great, I know it. <laughs>